Today we're going to go through some basic ED echo or focus echo in life support videos uh, to give you a bit of a demonstration of, of what we do locally here in terms of using our ultrasound to assess some certain pathologies in critical care. We're going to be using the Philips Spark today to do all the imaging, which is our ultrasound machine that we have in our emergency department here. So I'm based in Toowoomba Hospital and the protocol that we're going to go to through today is definitely a local protocol, but it can be adapted to use anywhere that you'd like. And the main focus of today is using simple 2D imaging to capture the views that we need to make some assessment in terms of critical care. So the images that we're going to go through, I'm going to talk through and go through a video around how to capture a sub four chamber view, then an IVC view. We're going to go and do the parasternal short and parasternal long views, and then an apical four chamber. As you'll note, when we do the videos, there's no color or no Doppler, and that's to keep things really simple, which I think is really important for emergency doctors and, and uh, critical care physicians who are definitely amateur sonographers. I'm not pretending to be an echo sonographer or a cardiologist. We're doing very simple image acquisition to answer some simple questions looking at left ventricular size and function, right ventricular size and function, is there a pericardial effusion or not, uh, and what is the overall fluid status of our patient. Uh, so what we're going to do here is really just th go run through the five basic windows that you use to assess the major pathologies that we're looking for in a focus echo. Um, this is by no means, as we talked about, by no means a full extensive echo. And what we're really doing is just focusing on the major pathologies that we're looking for, which is gonna be pericardial fusion, right ventricular size and function, left ventricular size and function, and then fluid status in life support. Um, so Jerry's our model, which is great. We've got him in the position here, which is normal, which is supine to start with. I'm just going to run you through, we've got the Philips Spark, how we go and set up an exam as well. So to start with, you want to record these. So you go start and end. You want to start with a new patient. For our protocol up here, what we do is we put the UR number in, which for today, we'll just use today's date, followed by my initials, and then the last name of the patient. And for this purpose, we're just going to put Jerry. Uh, and then if I was supervising someone or proctoring someone, then I'd put myself as a performed by person in this exam as well. We go across here to choose our transducer or preset. We want the cardiac probe or sector probe, and we want the cardiac preset. And then across and save and exit. So that sets up a, a window now, which is specific for Jerry, which will record and document under his name and UR number when we're doing it in real life. Next part, so we're going to start with the sub xiphoid view. We're going to look first at the sub xiphoid four chamber view, and then we're going to flick and have a look at the IVC. Purely pragmatics is the only reason that I start here. One, it's the view that you're going to get if you're doing it in CPR. And two, it actually gives you a lot of information about the big things that we're looking for straight up, which is going to be pericardial effusion, fluid status, and also for right ventricular size and function in terms of a pulmonary embolus, which when you're doing CPR, they're the main things that you really want to know straight up. So Ziffy sternum, probe marker to the patient's left shoulder or to three o'clock. Go down until you get a loss of resistance there and then just gentle pressure and then tilt in. And hopefully what you see is some good cardiac activity there, which you can see with Jerry. Now we're just going to gives ourselves a touch more gain and a touch more depth. So you can see here, the view is not too bad to start with. He's a pretty easy specimen, which is excellent. So we've got right ventricle, left ventricle, right atrium, left atrium. And what we'd be looking for here is some of those pathologies that we talked about. It's a bit foreshortened, so we'll just come in and try and extend that out a little bit. So that's pretty good there. If you wanted to, we'd get Jerry to take a deep breath in. And then you can see that it crisps up that image nicely there as well. If, you, if your patient is able to, use respiration. So breathe away normally. So from this view here, after you're acquiring, so you want to acquire a cine loop here. So we go acquire. All right, so that's, you can see up in the window there now, that's saved. From here, if you flick that marker probe up to 12 o'clock and then across slightly, to the patient's right, you'll get the IVC. So 12 o'clock and then across to the patient's right. So you can see that's a really nice window there. We're just gonna drop our depth a touch so that we can put that in the focal point. 
And what you're looking here is just assessing obviously size and collapsibility. So try and get that nice window there and we can just make an observation about that with respiration so that it's collapsing down with inspiration, which is good. Uh, we'll just acquire that one there again. If you can try and capture the hepatic vein coming in, that's where you really want to do your measurements. But for our protocol, we're just going based on eyeball without measuring that. So if we can get Jerry to take a sniff, you can see that real collapse there. Now we're going to go to our parasternal views. So for these, you've got a couple of options. Really, it's better if you can have your patient on the left-hand side for all the chest views. So what we'll do, if your patient is obviously an extremis and that's, that's not feasible, then it's fine. You can do it with them lying flat. You'll just find your views harder to get. So if they're able to, always roll your patient over to the left-hand side. So Jerry, just roll slightly over to your left for me. You can tuck a pillow in behind there, or what I tend to do is just put my left hand on the shoulder to give them a bit of support. So we're gonna start with a parasternal long axis. So third or fourth intercostal space. Marker probe this side is gonna be now over to the patient's right shoulder, okay? And you're just gonna put it down and see what you can see. So you can see again, we've got a young, healthy, skinny male with excellent windows. So when you're trying to acquire your view, we'll just acquire that there. Just lengthen out that ventricle a touch by just rotating the probe a little bit. So we'll acquire that. What you can see here is we've got the right ventricular outflow tract, left ventricular outflow tract here, and then left ventricular inflow here through the mitral valve, aortic valve up here. So that's your parasternal long axis. From this position here to get your short axis, where we're gonna cut through here, when we spin our marker probe around to the patient's left shoulder or around to the three o'clock is where you're gonna cut through. So depending where you want the mitral valve or whether you want the uh, ventricular muscle, you can either sort of slide around and make that where you wanna go through. So we're gonna to aim to cut through here through the ventricular muscle. So we're gonna switch that around, around to the patient's left shoulder. And you can see here, we get a really beautiful view of the left ventricle with the fish, classic fish mouth view. So if we come down a little bit further, we'll go through papillary muscle there. So from an ED or critical care perspective, this is the most, this is a really useful view for left ventricular function and then extending that onto regional wall motion abnormality, which isn't part of our pro protocol locally here. So you can see if you wanted to look for Ding of the ventricle in terms of a PE, this is the best view to do that on there. So you can see there, beautiful view. We've got right ventricle over here, left ventricle there. So we'll acquire that one. And our last view of the chest here is our apical four chamber. So from where we were before, what we're gonna do now is basically you wanna put your probe on the apex. So Jerry's a young skinny fellow. His apex is likely to be down around the nipple area or probably a bit further out, okay? So what, just pop your probe down and really just see what you can see. And your marker probe again to the left-hand side. So I think what we do in ED generally is we don't go laterally enough. There we go, that's a bit better. So as you can see there, we've got left ventricle, right ventricle, right atrium and left atrium with our valves there. So if from this point of view, so we'll just acquire that one there. You try and make that, that apex as thin as you possibly can, thin walled as you can. And if you wanted to here, you can make it a five chamber by just tilting up to try and capture the aortic valve. We're not gonna get a, a beautiful view here. Basically the bed's in the road. So we could even just roll Jerry back over a little bit more. There we go. And then we get a much nicer view there the full chamber. And again, tilt up if we can. And you get the five chamber coming in. We're just on a rib there. So once we've captured all of those image, we can then end the exam. So from our perspective, what we do from here is you can lie your patient back, hit start and 
and study and that'll store that for you. My recommendation would be if you're doing this in a critically unwell patient, capture those images as quickly as you can, store them and then move away from the patient and actually do your, temp your interpretation away from the patient rather than stuffing around trying to get the perfect view because you want to get in and out quickly and then you can actually do your interpretation later by having a look at the images on the machine. So that concludes our video tutorial for focused echo and life support or basic ED echo. Thanks for watching. Hopefully it was helpful for everyone. Happy scanning.